is that, you know, as a leading post-secondary institution, they've actually set a standard for global food security, but they recognize in their efforts to create like a research institute to be a leader in global food security, that they also needed to look within themselves and recognize that many of the students that they had on campus were also food insecure. And so they've actually done both as they've looked at, you know, let's be a leader in this globally, but let's also be a leader in this in dealing with the health of our own population. And that doesn't always happen, so I think that sort of deserves some kudos. And so eating unhealthy food and skipping meals should not be a rite of passage for college students. And we believe that for our students to thrive, they must also be food secure. And so they're making some great efforts to, um, to be able to create some change for their students on campus. We see they are doing some leading stuff. And again, it's a student-driven initiative. So, you know, the action out of this, these are recommendations, give us some flexibility in collecting the data, and then develop our background knowledge, collect some uh, college population as well as some environmental scan, interview and observational data, and then make some recommendations for action. So I just put there, um, a lot of the information that I'm going to present to you does come from our college-wide campus survey. I should, should say that. Campus-wide survey. So our students, we did a pen and paper, sort of traditional um, gathering of information survey two pages and uh, we had a student response rate of 15 percent and an employee response rate of 23 percent and then a total response rate of 19 percent so we did get representative sample in terms of all the various program areas that we have and gender balance and age balance so that's pretty good response rates a little bit low from some of the other surveys that i've done but i still think it, it might point us in the right direction and i'm not sure what you guys think about a population health survey and response rate but that would be nice so you might want to take some of the results with Creating a system that is sustainable locally produced foods when we need it. We also, and you know, this is the image that I can steal off the internet quickly. Um, there are other images of similar models that have been produced with various um, food security reports that have been created up and down the Okanagan Valley. So this is probably familiar to you. It comes from some public health documentation around how do we look at creating a community that has short-term food relief in case of emergency but also going further to build capacity and empowering individuals within the community and then looking at a systemic shift for sustainable change. And so, you know, this is, this is a lot of what we have going on with our food banks and our community kitchens and our support network that was supposed to be emergency food relief, but I think as many of you know, it's many people rely on that as um, some of the core calories that they consume on a regular basis. And then we're, of course, moving towards some of these types of things. And we have some great things going on in the local community and then I was even surprised to find out that we have some of this stuff happening at our local college, not necessarily at the 